Today, I'm going to show you guys how to put yourself into this cool vector logo design in today's Adobe Illustrator tutorial with Satori Graphics. What is up people, welcome back to Satori Graphics, the home of graphic design content right here on YouTube. Today I've got a really cool vector logo design tutorial where you can place yourself into your very own logo design. The process is pretty straightforward, so follow along with me and place yourself into a cool vector logo design. We're going to be using Adobe Illustrator for today's tutorial, so let's waste no more time and let's get straight to it. You're going to want to take a high quality image of yourself like I've done here, and try to get yourself in front of a white backdrop for this vector logo tutorial. As you will see later, it helps if you don't have much light reflecting on your face. I've got quite a bit of reflection on mine, but that's okay. Once you open up the image in Adobe Illustrator, probably going to be supersized, so hold down Alt Option key and Shift at the same time, and then click and drag to make it smaller. This is going to make it easier to work with. To cut yourself out for the vector logo design, go ahead and open up the image trace window. We need to choose the black and white option and then click the advanced arrow to open up yet more options. Play around with the settings, but the key setting you want to look at is the threshold. Experiment with it until you get a good contrast between you being in a silhouette and having a crisp outline on your face and profile. Checking the preview box will allow you to see the changes you're making as you go along. If you have white spots in the middle of your face like I do, don't worry, we can resolve that later. Just make sure to cover most things of the image in shadow and then have a nice crisp outline. Once happy, go to Object, Image Trace and then Expand. Then you're going to want to ungroup everything because right now it's all grouped as one shape. If you have aspects of your design that you don't want, but are joined to yourself, use the pen tool to draw around the area you don't want, and then select both areas by holding down shift. You can then open up the Pathfinder window and use the same option as I'm using here to remove it. Now for the mid section, you can tidy this up by deleting areas with the selection tool, which does take quite a lot of time. But you can also press A on your keyboard to access the direct selection tool and then delete the inner areas. However, the best way would be to take the pen tool again and to draw around an area that covers the negative spaces. You can then unite everything in the Pathfinder window. For your vector logo design, take your time to tidy up all areas of your cutout image so it looks like one solid black object. In this vector logo tutorial, we're going to make the cool gradient effect next. Move your profile vector over to one side and then take the ellipse tool. Hold down shift to create a perfect circle. You can then increase the stroke weight and place yourself over the circle like I'm doing here. You may want to take your time to position it perfectly as this is how your vector logo design will take shape from here on out. So once you're happy, hold down a click over the pen tool in the toolbar so you can access the Add Anchor Point tool. Click once on the bottom of your design, and then use the Direct Selection tool to move that point downwards following the circle curvature. I'm adjusting my stroke weight here a little bit, but when you're happy with your vector design thus far, hold down the Alt Option key and duplicate the circle because we need it later. Then select the vector outline and the circle and use the crop setting in the Pathfinder window. Then take the direct selection to remove the unwanted areas. To 
but bring the second circle into place and as you can see the layout of the vector logo is taking shape. Outline the stroke on your circle, but when you do, you're not going to be able to adjust the stroke weight again, so keep that in mind. Select both shapes and unite them in the Pathfinder window, and you will now have one solid single shape for your vector logo in today's tutorial. So now access the ellipse tool by pressing L on your keyboard or you can locate it in the toolbar. Then make a circle as we did before. We can use the direct selection tool to drag one of the anchor points up to make an elongated shape like so. Add a gradient fill from the bottom left of your screen and edit the colour of your gradient. You can use whatever colour you wish for your vector logo, but I personally would like to use vibrant and bold colours, hence why I'm going for oranges and pinks. You need to add a black colour to your vector logo shape, and as you can see here I fast forwarded the process of adding the gradient because it did take quite a long time for me to figure that out. With the colour shape selected, press R on your keyboard to access the rotate tool, and then drag the target blue icon down to the lowest point of the shape. Click once, and then hold down the Alt Option key and click again. Type in 18 degrees, and instead of clicking OK, click Copy. So once you've clicked Copy, press Command or Control D to repeat the process over and over again. We want to make a kind of semicircle which looks pretty cool. Click over all of the shapes and then rotate them like so. We then need to select the vector logo shape and create a compound path. Bring it over to the top of your shapes, and if it's not in the front of everything, bring it to the front of all layers by going up to Object Arrange and Bring to Front. You then select everything and right click the selection and create Clipper Mask. You can also go up to Object and create Clipper Mask. If you want to redo the positioning, press Command or Control Z and reposition your vector logo design. You might want to take your time playing around with the position of the colour shapes, how many colour shapes you use, and also the size of the vector logo cutout. As you can see I spent quite a long time creating a clipping mask of my vector logo and then changing the position multiple times over. I really do love this effect and I feel it looks pretty cool when complete. Lastly, as you can see here the vector logo design has no background. But if you do want a background, you can add one by using the ellipse tool to create a circle. Resize and position it in place like so, and then send the circle to the back. And now you have a background to use on your logo design, and you can also change the colour of it if you wish. Of course, you can then add typography to logo design, or you can keep it as a symbol. It's totally up to you what you want to do with it. So there was my tutorial on how to place yourself into a cool vector logo design using Adobe Illustrator. Let me know what you thought of today's tutorial in the comment section below. And don't forget to drop a like and share my content if you really do find my videos useful. I've got lots of cool content coming up this week as well as further into the year of 2018. So give me a subscribe if you like my content and you want to see more videos just like this one today. Also, if you do make your own vector logo design using yourself as a template, Tag me on Twitter or Instagram because I'm really curious to see your designs and what you come up with. So until next time, design your future today. Peace.